What's good, y'all? It's Bull Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 secrets to a guaranteed pop in wrestling. Now, we all know there are certain things that you can do that's gonna get the crowd to liven up. You know, sometimes it may be uh, saying a, a curse word here or there, or sometimes it, you know, just calling out the, the city that you're in gives you a cheap pop sometimes. So we're gonna check out some of these moments. I wonder if they're gonna be on this list. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel, man. Let's get right Getting over. Getting over isn't easy. It can take years, and in most cases, it does. It's a combination of patience and perseverance, not to mention bookers finding the right spot and executing it with a talent that has honed their abilities to a sharpened point. Getting mm -hmm. over and mastering one's craft is a slow and complex process, even for those destined to be great. Yep. Or is it? I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 secrets to a guaranteed pop in wrestling. Number 10, getting the tables. Yep. Picture the scene, it's a Monday <laughs> night, WWE is several weeks away from a premium live event and there isn't a great deal going on, which means the bookers can pretty much phone this episode of Raw in. So for example, it's Dominic Mysterio versus Carl Anderson, no disqualifications in front of a mausoleum of a crowd in some backwards market. Nobody really cares about the action, a few fans are bored and a we want tables chart begins to murmur out mm -hmm. and then one of the stars draws a table out from under the ring and the fans go bonkers doesn't matter how bad a match is doesn't yep. matter that they don't this care about anything else going on this is a generation of passive fans who have been programmed to go wild at the admittedly very satisfying sound of compressed sawdust exploding <laughs> that sounds snarky but it's not actually hyperbole at hell in a cell last year it didn't matter that cody rhodes his body bruised internally to a disgusting yeah. extent was entering the most heroic performance of almost anyone life when he was about to eat a table those fans turned feral number mm -hmm. nine removing an article of clothing a generation <laughs> of wrestling fans those who make up a not inconsiderable part of the audience these days was raised on hulk hogan tearing off his yellow vest and conveying his vast superheroic power to the audience as that audience matured vince mcmahon realized that booking women to show off their skin would also allow that audience to react it was yeah, just the definitely get a pop back then. playing sunny d quaffing boys who delighted in this sort of thing amid the attitude era the squeals of women were also heard throughout arenas mm -hmm. when Jeff Hardy took his top off to get his demented aerial stunts all the way over. Though nowhere near on the same scale, Angel Garza initially got over as one of the few highlights of the early NXT on USA era by, midway through his matches, removing his tights, throwing them at his foes and working the rest of the match in trunks. Kazuchika Okada generated one of the loudest pops in the history of New Japan Pro Wrestling by switching from flared trousers to his classic trunks in 2019. It's not particularly big nor clever, but it is relevant relatively over. It Number does eight, work. Saying a naughty word. I just Human said it. Are I just said it when you start cursing. Woo! <laughs> simultaneously very complex and very simple. In a warped way, it's almost wholesome or reassuring that people still clutch the pearls or express shock when they hear a certain word in a public setting. Saying the word S-H-I-T on national television has been permissible for several years at this point. Hell, some shows do a lot worse, but it's a no-no in school and in the world workplace. When a wrestler in AEW, and it's always AEW, let's face it, mm -hmm. says that word, it's guaranteed to generate a reaction. Yep. Can they say that? Well, they can because they do so virtually every single week, yep. but it still evokes a big massive whoa reaction. The word sh has somehow retained the power to momentarily turn everybody into Mary Whitehouse, and virtually every AEW wrestler is brazen in their quest to yep. wield its power. Number and that's the thing, even though they can, you know, they're allowed to curse, I do think it should be, it should make sense. They do curse a lot, and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm not going to be one of these peers or anything like that. But I'm also about moderation. When it makes sense, like when Daniel, uh, Brian Danielson was uh, right before uh, their match, with uh, right before his match, uh, his Iron Man match with MJF, and that promo, even though they had to cut it or whatever, but what he said... It, it had so much impact. The crowd went crazy for it because, you know, you felt the passion behind what he was saying, you know, and that's why I mean by certain, there's nothing wrong with curse words being said. It just has to make sense and in the right setting at the right time. It shouldn't just be something that's thrown out all the time, but if it makes sense and it's, it's, it's good to enhance the feud and maybe get a laugh here and there, whatever the situation is, I'm all for it. So if they can work on just making sure it's 
not overuse cursing, you know, and using the hard, you know, the hard F and all the other stuff, you know. They can make it work. Seven, saying another naughty word. The word crap exists for a very obvious reason. For example, our editor just bleeped me saying the previous curse word, but I can get away with that one scot-free. But mm -hmm. it's not very exciting, and so some wrestlers will try their hand at seeing what they can and can't get away with. Mm -hmm. Jungle Boy reportedly got in trouble for cutting out yeah. Christian Cage on TV, and Rick Ross's AEW appearance featured an amazing <laughs> moment where he called Keith Lee a big a I told you that. That F word, you gotta really be careful with that. <laughs> For national tele uh, television purposes. <laughs> mf -er, which will never, ever happen again. So yeah. what's left? Why the big old B word, of course, the one every woman in wrestling uses to describe mm -hmm. each other for emphasis. It's eternal. The hard B sound adds emphasis to the disrespect. It's fun to say and to listen to. A wrestler can get themselves in superb cardiovascular condition and perfect their difficult craft over a painstaking span of years, but most of the time they're not as over as a hard consonant. Number Facts. six. <laughs> insulting the local sports team. Certain mm -hmm. ancient wrestlers will harp on relentlessly about the lost art of getting heat. And to a certain extent, it is lost because people don't really care about much anymore, desensitized as they are by the conveyor belt of horror that is everyday life. Ultimately, mm -hmm. a Twitter user is more likely to get a toxic reaction for burying a wrestler than a rival with whom that wrestler is currently feuding. But mm -hmm. mostly, when the heel mocks the baby face, the reaction is at best performative. With rare exceptions, the psyche of the general public is out of step with wrestling's traditional method of evoking emotion. Unless those fans really feel something when their local sports team gets insulted. Sport is real, closely bonded to the DNA of those who love it as a family tradition and mm -hmm. makes up their regional identity. It really hurts when the local team fails, it penetrates the calloused husk developed across this hellscape of a century, and even the most basic heels grasp this concept. Number yeah, it's, it's, that's an easy straw. You talk about a team that's doing bad, you're gonna get some heat. You're gonna get a reaction. <laughs> Unless they don't care about you, you're gonna get some reaction. Five, saying something reprehensible. Even if they don't care Picturing about you, Picturing the WhatsApp a, message a threads a of wrestlers is an amusing way to pass the time. There'll be some boring nuts and bolts stuff in there as they toss around ideas for their upcoming match, but the etiquette of the insult is something else. They have to delicately phrase what they'd like to say as an insult to avoid situations like the one that famously arose between Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara mm -hmm. last summer. Now, I would never dream of suggesting that you're out of shape, but this seems to be the sentiment online. You know how those marks get. All that said, can I call you a fat, disgusting blob on TV? It'll get a pop. And a pop it does get, which is why it happens. And mm -hmm. the thing is, a wrestler is considered a mark themselves if they don't go along with it too. Which is why you hear things like, your beloved family member died recently, and that really gets me off. The taboo of which is a yeah. veritable pop generator. Number mm -hmm. four, executing when a- you, When you uh, definitely uh, <laughs> get personal, get disrespectful, that's when crowds- they 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 tend to come alive like oh this may be some real stuff here you want to be able to blur the lines of what's real and what's fake yeah a lot of times you know obviously they let each other know what they're going to say and kind of what pu bullet points they're going to say but sometimes you know what I'm saying even if they know that they got to be willing both parties got to be willing to you know be able to take the heat of the other person giving the promo on them and you know that can it can create some great stuff or sometimes uh you can end up with a cm punk and an adam page where he ends up going off script and pretty much saying screw you <laughs> on live television and you know you have that debacle so that can happen but either way it gets it's entertaining for the fans Canadian destroyer if you ordinarily wouldn't. In a typical week of pro wrestling these days, the fandom will see a classic or near classic match, an unbelievable unscripted promo, mm -hmm. a returning or debuting talent, a crazy table spot, a crimson mask, and promises for yet more great matches next week. The modern wrestling fan is inundated with brilliance constantly across countless facets and genres of the medium. Enjoy the wrestling world as it exists right now because it's almost impossible for it to get any better. So, how in the face of this normalized wonder can a wrestler ever hope to get over? There are no you don't see that everyday moments left yeah. unless the wrestler is smart about it. One could always execute a Canadian destroyer, but only if they're one of the 15% of wrestlers who don't include it in their standard repertoire. Mm -hmm. It's as much crowd appeal as wrestling move at this point, sucking up in the coolest way possible. Yep. John Cena should have tried it between 2006 and 2014. He didn't, but the very savvy Dustin Rhodes did. In doing so, he got over in early 
the AEW yep. as an anti-bad faith actor willing to respect and mix it up with the new generation of wrestlers to get over with the shifting tastes of the fans. See also Bad Bunny who drew a gigantic pop with the Destroyer at WrestleMania yep. 37 Which because it's crazy. a complex and athletic <laughs> movie seemingly had no right to execute. That was a Number crazy three, spot bumping too. Bumping on the apron. Okay well here's the truth of it the apron isn't the hardest part of the ring that metal ring post over there is definitely the hardest part of the ring. Still it's all a work and commentators have insisted that the apron is more or less a concrete floor for so long that the fandom has long accepted it as a fact. And because fans readily accept its danger a pro wrestler will bump themselves stupid on the thing knowing that their agony won't be in vain. Jeez. Spots like this are so popular in fact that AEW configured its very ring in order to facilitate as many apron bumps as possible in yep. relatively safe <laughs> I can see fashion. That. <laughs> the distance between the ropes and the actual brutal edge of the ring is by design sufficiently large enough for wrestlers to work on it as they would the actual canvas. The structure of the ring enables the talent to appear that they have mastered the impressive art of balance and they bump in most cases without quite smacking their heads against the sharp awful corner. Moderately worked or otherwise as much as people complain about excess in wrestling the apron bump still elicits a guaranteed pop in 20. It always makes me cringe. I don't care what type of apron bump I just ooh that don't ooh that don't look good. 2023. Number two, kicking out of a finisher. When yep. all else fails, let somebody kick out of your finish. Works every time. Every this time. is something that the vast majority <laughs> of pro wrestlers do in this day and age rather often to ch Even though I'm not the biggest fan of it, it should only happen in certain situations. I do think it gets overused because your finisher is your finisher. It should be something that finished the match. It only should happen if it makes sense case that high of a molten crowd under their complete control. However, greats like Kenny Omega needn't rely on the trick. The man is such a genius at structuring a match that he doesn't have to do it. He can orchestrate a louder pop by teasing a move, by registering how much the execution of a move is going to be unhinged in its apparent danger before it's even struck. He's perfected the pacing and rhythm of a match so that everything within it matters. Consider the Wrestle Kingdom spot in which he battered Will Ospreay's head through an unforgiving Japanese table. It was actually tame by the standards of the wider match anyway but the <laughs> visuals were so stunning and the danger level had been set so high that it registered as nothing less than the baby face fight for Osprey's life. Since few others are this clever if they want to make a TV match feel big and turn up the volume the 2.99 kick out and shocked mm -hmm. face hasn't stopped working yet. I can hear Michael Cole's voice bouncing around my brain yelling <laughs> two and a half two and a half and number one, performing a rare intergender spot. This isn't yeah. a defense, not a criticism of intergender. Equal rights, equal fights. <laughs> Wrestling, more an observation. It's pointless to enter that debate, especially in this form, because of course it always explodes into a massive conversation, also read argument. Of course it's all risky, simulated man on woman violence is something sponsors will not tolerate, and nope. when the roles are reversed, the conversation takes a phenomenally bleak turn by those who could do with developing meaningful relationships to grasp a better understanding of how the world actually works. All that stated, it is a guaranteed pop. Rhea yep. Ripley is more over than most WWE acts outside of the top stars and she mm -hmm. frequently takes out men. On the November 28th, 2022 Raw, Mia Yim executed a body slam on Finn Balor to an ultra rare eruption of a Monday night pop. For whatever reason, done sparingly, an intergender spot wakes up the dead. Perhaps that's the point and something the business can take on as a lesson even if it isn't applied literally. Wrestling is so excessive in every area between gimmicks, returns and back and forth high end action that something the audience hasn't been Love exhausted that by is One of the best like RKO's oh, that's Randy Orton has ever delivered on Nia Jax. It was just kiss. Oh, the crowd went crazy. Oh, equal rights, equal fights. What else do I have to say, man? Comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys agree with uh, everything that's on this list as a guaranteed pop? And if you have something else that you would add to this list that you know will get a guaranteed pop or reaction from a wrestling crowd, put it down below. But I appreciate all love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150k, and I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world, and you're in the coach world heavyweight champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next week. Peace.